Hello and welcome to this masterclass with Syracuse University. The focus of uh, tonight's event or today, um, according to where you are connecting from, will be networking and the value of a business education. So stay tuned for tips, tricks and uh, more insight into, uh, into these topics. So on behalf of Syracuse, we have uh, with us Patrick Riolo. He's the Marketing Le Leadership Development Program Associate at Hill Rom. Uh, and Benji Whitman, he's uh, Training Coordinator for Service at Sweetwater. So Benji and Patrick, thank you for being here with us today. And uh, I appreciate the time that you are taking out of your uh, day to just give your insight uh, into the experience at Syracuse. We also have uh, Shri, she's the Assistant Director for Recruitment uh, within the Master Programs at uh, Syracuse University. Shri, once again, welcome and thank you for being here with us today. And in the meantime, I see a participant from Nigeria. Hello, Ruth. It's a pleasure to have you. For those who uh, just connected, welcome once again. My name is Lavinia and I'm part of the Doc City team. So the focus of this masterclass will be networking and the value of a business education. Without further ado, I want to thank all of you once again. Remind you that if you have any questions pertaining to the topic of the event or the programs at Syracuse, we are here to answer them. And uh, if you have any questions at all, you can write them in the Q&A box and we'll be happy to answer those um, at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, Shri, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Lavinia, thanks so much. It's a pleasure always uh, to collaborate with Doc City, and I'm happy that we were able to make this happen. And today I have two of my alumni recently graduated, Patrick and Benji. And, um, it's an interesting topic, isn't it? The value of business education. We listen to uh, people talk about their experiences when they attend a business school program, whether it's at the undergraduate level or at the graduate level. We read about that in the news uh, in various uh, uh, operations, different industries and in different ways. And so I thought it would be nice to bring uh, two of my alumni here to share their particular experiences with how uh, an MBA program has helped them in their own careers. So I'm going to start out by sharing my screen. And if you can just indicate in the chat box that you can all view it. Yes, we can, Shri. Thank you. Okay. So, all right. So I thought we could start out by talking a little bit about what are the types of programs that are available at the business school. So typically the B school program offerings are two main types of degrees. There is the more commonly known Masters in Business Administration degree or the MBA degree. And then more recently, there have been a lot more shorter duration offerings with the specialized master's programs. They may be offered in different program formats, full-time or part-time or online. And the duration of the programs is going to vary depending on which degree, which format, which institution, which region you choose these offerings at, right? So this is in general about business school. Now, what are the specific differences between going in for an MBA degree as opposed to pursuing a specialized master's degree? So. Let's start with the MBA. So if it's a terminal professional degree, it's traditionally offered as a full-time two-year degree. Um, although there are more recent other offerings which could be completed in one year, there are also other iterations of the MBA in terms of an executive MBA for those who are in more senior roles and with quite a few years of work experience looking to just get a refresher knowledge uh, about industry trends and content. There are options available, like I said, part-time and online. And in some cases, they're also available in hybrid uh, modalities. Typically, the MBA degree will require work experience, depending on the curriculum of the program as it is at a particular business school that you are targeting and the region in which you are targeting, the number of years for prerequisite work experience could be different. 
Some places it could be two years, some places the minimum work experience could be three to five years. So it really depends on the type of program that you're targeting and the location and the curriculum of the school. There will be some level of practical experience that is included within the MBA curriculum. And this will be in the form of either a mandatory internship, a co-op experience, experiential learning, what have you. And typically the MBA is useful for candidates who are seeking advancement in a particular career, or they are seeking to pivot from their existing career into a different um, disciplinary area or a different industry completely. So what's the variation with a specialized master's program then? So this is a degree that used to be more common in Europe and emerged in the US potentially about two decades ago or so. It's shorter in duration, but more intense because it's shorter. There is a lot packed into a limited time frame does not require work experience and is typically targeted at fresh graduates. So if you are an undergraduate student who has completed your undergraduate or bachelor's degree in a particular field and want to actually go for a master's degree in a business discipline, the specialized master's program is geared for you. It may or may not include summer internship opportunities. It provides a depth of study in an area and prepares you for the job market. Now, with specialized master's degree programs, because there is no requirement of prior work experience, there is also the importance for you to look at in terms of prerequisite coursework. In certain areas, for instance, in accounting or finance, there might be additional content that you would have to complete as part of your master's degree program in order to fulfill the needs of the master's program itself. And if you come from a non-business background, that might be uh, accommodated within the master's degree program itself. But to, usually we don't require work experience. So what's the value for business education having understood about the different B-School program offerings. So now you know that the MBA is not the only program option available to you. You also have a specialized master's degree available to you. But focusing or staying with our interest in just general business education, because you will have some, some coursework which will be general in both types of degree programs. One of the things you want to recognize is how every industry can be understood as a business. And therefore, the business education, the value is going to span across disciplines and industries. And as I was trying to prepare this presentation and think about examples or an analogy as to how to talk about it, the first thing that hit me was we learn how to ride a bike when we are kids, but not with the intention that we are going to buy a bicycle and keep it with us or use it to commute or you know we don't have all these different plans or different stages already mapped out but we just learn how to ride a bike because we enjoy it but it offers us lifelong value whether we recognize it immediately in the moment or we recognize it at a later time business education is similar to that it teaches you skill sets which are valuable, not just in the moment, but also uh, in terms of lifelong learning. So collaboration teamwork is one of the primary aspects of B-School education. And through the experiences of uh, both Benji and Patrick today, I, uh, I hope you will see how this played out in the classroom for them and then how they're actually taking it and um, utilizing it in their own workspace and how it plays out in their day-to-day -day lives. Technical and quantitative skill sets. So this is something which is disciplinary focused and you will learn in your program depending on the specialization that you choose and the skill sets that you gain. So some of it from the general management courses and some based on the specialization. So your skill sets might be very discipline specific and also span across uh, in general management. Presentation public speaking. This is something you're not going to be able to avoid, especially if you have been introverted or you are someone who experiences stage fright or have not had a lot of opportunities to engage in public speaking or uh, doing 
presentations. So in the classroom, most of your projects you will be doing with your teammates and you will have to present at the end of your um, class uh, assignment or your group project that you will have to make a team presentation. So you will be involved in preparing the presentation and you will have to get over any nerves uh, to actually do your presentation. And, and as I was thinking about my own experience, I remember back in college, I never wanted to do anything in relation to public speaking because I had tremendous stage fright. Uh, and, and Lavinia probably is laughing because uh, how many webinars have I done so far <laughs> just with Doc City? But it's, it's something that you begin to enjoy once you get the knack and that's something that we prepare you for in uh, business school. Communication networking. This is another important skill. So while communication might be parsed into specific types of communication or uh, oral or verbal communication among peers, with faculty, with uh, recruiters, advisors, but then also taking it beyond that into your marketing domains, into your business environment, but then networking, moving out from interpersonal communication and expanding it into a networking scenario and going with the flow when you are in a room full of strangers, how do you go approach somebody and how do you network? That's an important skill set that you have to learn. And that's something that a business education teaches you and prepares you for at the school level. So I just wanted to throw these uh, two links here for those who might be interested in exploring the programs of the Whitman School of Management, but we are not actually going to discuss in depth about the Whitman programs. I just wanted to give you the links here. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me later, but I will address a little bit about the MBA full-time program here. And this will be like a context to situate the experiences of um, our other two guests today, Patrick and Benji. So the MBA program is a typical two-year program requiring 54 credits and 36 credits are core credits or general management credits. 18 credits are the specialization credits. So to the right side of the screen, you see the different specialization areas. So your 18 credits can come from a combination or uh, from just focusing in any one particular uh, concentration area. Dual specialization is allowed. Up to nine credits are allowed from other graduate programs on campus. And then WIRE is actually a new initiative that was just launched um, a few months ago. And Benji and Patrick didn't have access to this when they were in the program but it's the Whitman Industry Readiness and Excellence Initiative, wherein the school will assist you in offering financial uh, support for you to pursue any industry readiness uh, certification. For example, you want to get a certification in Google Analytics, even though it's free, but for example, if that's something that you have to pay for, then the school will pay for it and you can complete and pursue the certification. So. Patrick and Benji come from a slightly different uh, perspective into the MBA program. What I have not mentioned here because it's not very common is that the Whitman School of Management has a relationship with two schools on campus. One is the Setner School of Music and the other is the College of Engineering and Computer Science. So if a student has been admitted into the School of Music, specifically in the Bachelor's in Music Industry program and uh, admitted, or I'm sorry, the second example is admitted into the School of Engineering in any of uh, the engineering degree specializations, they have an opportunity to pursue an MBA through a dual degree option that can be completed in five years. So it's called the three plus two bachelor's in music industry slash MBA degree. So you complete two degrees at the end of five years, or it's the other option is the similar three plus two Riley engineering um, MBA dual degree. So I'm gonna start with Benji because Benji came into the program with a background in music. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight here is it's a completely non-business background. 
music industry. Yes, some aspect to business, but otherwise his undergrad degree, you can see him playing the drums there. Um, what other instruments do you play, Benji? So talk about all of that and over to you. Thank you, Shri. Uh, super excited to be here in front of you all to talk about the value of a business education. And just as Shri mentioned, I'm coming from a little bit of a different background than, than most traditional MBA or business students. Um, but yes, firstly, and primarily, uh, I was a musician uh, and still am. So I'm a drummer, guitarist, vocalist, uh, worked all across uh, North America uh, doing some work. Uh, so between that, I'm also an outdoor educator. Uh, and on the top left, you'll, you'll see uh, I graduated from Whitman with my MBA uh, just, gosh, over a year ago now. <laughs> uh, I've settled here. I'm actually in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I accepted a position as the uh, training coordinator. I oversee and manage all the training and development for one of the nation's largest music retailers uh, and one of the world's largest mu music retailers. And that I'm able to kind of take parts of my music background, parts of my education background, and of course, a lot of my business uh, background with Whitman uh, to push myself forward. So looking at the next slide, uh, navigating Setner and Whitman. Like I said, I started out as an undergraduate student at Syracuse University pursuing a bachelor's in music industry, uh, which was all about music and music theory and learning about uh, the trends from the, the creative side. But I had a bit of a uh, business curiosity. There was something that I wanted to do beyond just play music as, as much as I love to do that. That's not what I really wanted to make a career out of. So I found out about our BM, MBA dual degree program, which Sri has just mentioned, the three plus dual program, uh, which is in coordination of the Visual and Performing Arts College on Syracuse University's campus and Whitman. Uh, and ultimately, it became uh, an investment in myself. Uh, so I went ahead and took the GMAT. I went ahead and applied. Uh, and then I spent the next three years uh, doing full-time MBA coursework alongside finishing my music degree. Uh, and the great thing about this is that, as again, Sri mentioned, that business is part of every industry. There's always some bit of business that it spans across. It's not just business specific, but whether music or you'll hear from Patrick uh, going through his engineering degree as well. Some of the highlights of my coursework, uh, I just have a list of my top, I think, seven or 10 classes or so that I really enjoyed. Anything from supply chain management to managerial skills to data analytics and decision making. The biggest part about all this is that it was really inclusive, anything from HR to finance, supply chain, accounting, business law, to get the whole picture, because I think a lot of times we get too deep in the weeds trying to do the, the small, fine detail operation, and we forget that there's so much more to, the, to a business degree, there's so much more to uh, a career than just one of these subsets. And what really st uh, struck out to me and became the, the kind of the holistic view is that firstly, uh, the business degree and all the coursework combined was practical. So it a hands-on uh, and innovative. So that's that technical and quantitative aspect that Sri was talking about. It was engaging. So it was interesting, inspiring. That's the lifelong value of the, of the presentations and the public speaking. And it's also relevant. So it was modern and progressive, spans across all the industries, whether music, education, uh, engineering, et cetera. Specifically in the MBA program at Whitman, uh, we have some concentration op opportunities, whether it's entrepreneurship or marketing or accounting. Uh, I opted to take the marketing concentration, which was an additional nine credits on top of my degree, or as part of my degree, I should say, because uh, I was really interesting about being able to communicate value. So it's taking this marketing co concentration along with uh, the nine elective credits, I was able to talk more about specifically how marketing and how to create that value alongside of the creative entrepreneurship classes that I took within Whitman and as part of the greater Syracuse University class structure. Value proposition for a business education. So with a robust business education, you will be able to develop and analyze fine detailed business operations. So this is the numbers. This is the quantitative and qualitative fine detail operation that we, we would get from any business uh, education. Two, 
understanding and conceptualizing long-term business solutions. So this is really being able to understand and confidently speak to inter-business decisions, and having that scope. And three, communicating and defending inter-business decisions and value. So this is the diversity of skills and providing the perspective of not just one aspect, but being able to understand the whole aspect from HR to uh, management, to accounting, to marketing, or whatever subset you find yourself intrigued into. Last bit, which is a little bit more specific about Syracuse University and where I got a lot of my value from was really through uh, the professional and career development as another value add. Uh, being able to practice and have the opportunities to develop uh, myself inside and outside the classroom. Uh, two, the opportunities to create, practice, and hone these skills. And finally, three, the alumni connections and the guest speakers, which really is what makes SU such an interesting and um, prominent aspect in the business, being able to have these alumni connections, talk to alumni past, and be able to build that network inside and out. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I know, Shree, we're going to pop that over to Patrick. He's going to talk to you a little bit about his uh, background, different from mine, uh, and his 3 plus 2 program. Beautiful, Benji. Um, so, yeah, so this first side is a little bit just about me because, you know, always like to share a little bit about me so you get to know me before I talk about my journey through with my business education. So I joined Syracuse as a bioengineer, and during my time at Syracuse, I was able to get a good amount of travel in. That picture that um, right on the middle left is me in Ireland. I was able to go to Rwanda on the bottom, me with the hiking stick, was at the top of a volcano. Uh, just like Benji, love the outdoors, There's, and any chance that I get to be outdoors, I always look forward to. Um, I'm also a huge foodie. There's a picture of the nacho table that I made last Super Bowl, which was really cool to have. And yeah, so on the right, our trees still stay on that slide. So I joined Hillrom after my time with uh, Syracuse. And Hillrom, they're a local company in Syracuse, and they were actually purchased by Baxter. So during my time at Hillrum and now Baxter, I've been able to see kind of what a multi-billion dollar acquisition looks like. And there's a lot more opportunities that I've been able to kind of access a lot more people kind of in the network because Baxter has an additional 50,000 employees that I've already been able to meet a good amount now that I'm based in Chicago where Baxter and Hillrum are headquartered. I've been working a lot on the Welch Allen brand of devices. so. My background is bioengineering and I wanted to go into medical devices and now I'm on the marketing side in kind of developing products and launching products. And the two you see there are ones that I'm kind of helping with launch in Latin America right now. I'm moving forward. So during my time, I entered Syracuse as a bioengineer and I kind of knew that engineering and healthcare was what I wanted to do, but I didn't really know where to go with it. And while I was in the program, I realized that medical devices is what I wanted to do. But in looking at going into jobs and where certain alumni that I had conversations with had gone and which career to me sounded the most exciting, I wanted to find a way to make myself stand out. And what a lot of alumni did is they ended up coming back and doing their MBA to get to those positions of being in charge of product lines, and having that responsibility for getting these medical devices that can help save patients, help nurse workflows, all of that, and they got the MBA. So I joined the three plus two program. And during that time, I kind of didn't really know what marketing was. To me, marketing was always just the advertisements you see at the Super Bowl, but marketing is so much more. And learning more about the competitive intelligence side of it, looking at your competition, looking at the market, finding the needs that people have, especially in healthcare, and creating a solution for them got me really excited and interested in marketing. And with uh, Whitman, I was also able to take an internship with the College of Law and their Innovation Center at SU. So in this internship, I was able to work with a lot of different startup companies in New York State, and they were all 
you know, one or two employees all created their own inventions, created their own devices, and were super passionate, super excited to launch them. And I was working on the market research. So giving them, you know, what is, does your market look like? Where can your device go? Who should you be selling it to? What, and I had the ability myself as the MBA student kind of on the team with all the law students to give them recommendations on who they should talk to, how they should sell their product, how oh, they can kind of look down the line of, you know, do they want to sell a company? Do they want to get IP and just get the royalties while getting it to a company that's a bit larger, that has the manufacturing, that can get them to regulatory? So it was that kind of set my line on where, where I wanted to go. And I applied to the job with Hillrom back in November of my kind of final year with the MBA. And I was able to get the position. So I accepted that offer. And since then, I joined them in July. And I worked in Skinny Atlas for eight months. And I was doing a lot of upstream development and upstream products. So looking at, you know, what are our competitors doing? And what new products do we want to create? And kind of moving the process along to make sure that we get the products out to the hospitals with you know, newer technology to help save and sustain lives. So looking back, I think there's a few moments that stand out. And just like Benji said, you know, we get so many different kind of facets of business beyond just marketing that is truly valuable to me. And I still you know, reflect on and it has helped me in a lot of ways. It's come up in conversation. It's funny because I'm actually at home right now and I have the book Crossing the Chasm, which we learned in one and came up in conversation in one of the kind of larger meetings with my department and just kind of explaining how digital technology and the adoption of digital technology completely is similar but also different in this new age and launching one of our products so me the new person on the team was kind of guiding our whole team through and it was because of my business education but one of the uh, moments that i kind of wanted to highlight you can see on the right that's me and my buddy paul so paul was in the three plus two bioengineering program and mba and we did you know, a ton of classes because it just lined up. And one of the moments that we always remember is when we started the company called Revolution Rides. Now this was in a one of our core classes and we competed with our classmates. So there were six different teams and me and Paul were our own team. Most of the teams had three or four, but me and Paul, we were super excited and we're just like, yeah, we got the decision making. We know what we're doing. And it was really cool because it gave us the opportunity to kind of see all the different aspects of the business. You know, we were looking at the market research of what our competitors were doing. We were looking at the inventory that we had. We were looking at forecasting for the next quarter on which um, we were looking at the forecasting to see how many bikes we wanted to make, make sure we weren't doing too much, make sure we weren't hitting our demand and weren't losing demand to our, uh, to our competitors. So it was really awesome and the simulation was very well fleshed out and it, it took the whole semester to kind of get from quarter one through quarter six. And one of the things that, I, that you know, this specific opportunity, but also I think we saw in basically every class was the ability to get that, as Benji said, hands-on experience and get some real world application. You know, the market changed. We had more opportunities to develop research on you know different bike parts and you know the decision making on things that we weren't too hyped up on you know i took our finance classes but that was not by any means me or paul's expertise and it gave us the ability to just kind of push that decision making take a few risks and we definitely had highs and lows i know for the mountain segment we were the leaders we had 40 percent of the market share and we were cruising high on that through the first five quarters and it all came crashing down as a failure in quarter six where we were the last in the market but despite that kind of failure you know we were able to see okay we took a little bit too risk and it gave us a chance to reevaluate our decisions and through a lot of different case studies in classes through 
just looking at what's happening currently in industries, looking at industry trends, listening to podcasts, reading articles, and having the opportunity to sit there with your other MBA students and MS students and just kind of discuss on what people's opinions were, what they had seen in their time and experience and out in the industry. And I think that collaborative process was really awesome. And just like this, there's a lot of opportunities where you're working with your classmates on different projects, you know, creating your own hypothetical business, creating projects, looking at case studies, you know, from our business review and other case studies on real world events that have happened, you know, looking at Ikea, looking at um, Amazon and decisions that executives and higher up leaders have had to make and making those decisions yourself, even going and making decisions that were not what the leaders of those companies did. And, you know, it gave you a lot of good picture of what outside is there and how to develop yourself into someone that knows how to make decisions and is confident in those decisions. So again, kind of looking back on the influence that I've had in my time with Baxter, that's actually my first day in Baxter at their office. And the first thing I would say is managing my time wisely. So it's something that during, you know, my coursework in the MBA, if I wasn't managing my time wisely, I would end up working till midnight the night before a deadline. And that's not something you can really do when you're in the workplace. You want to make sure that you're, you know, you're one piece of a larger machine, especially when you're in something like product development, everything needs to be moving as smoothly as possible so that we can hit each individual deadline and eventually get those devices into the hospitals because it's all ultimately for us, it's going to save patients' lives. And improving myself professionally is something that I'm always kind of aware of during my time at Hillrama Baxter. There's a few different opportunities that the company offers, you know, different boot camps, different trainings that can that I I would go outside of get those trainings to improve myself professionally because it's something that when I'm looking for the next position higher ups are going to be seeing well how is he improving himself has he done you know Hill Romney University has he taken the time to advance his leadership has he done some self-reflections and you know while staying on task and while kind of doing that taking risks is something that it's hard to always, you know, you're never sure which risk to take, which risk not to take. And for me, I'm usually the youngest person in the room with a lot of people with fancy titles that I think it's still intimidating a little bit to be in that room with the people that are actually going to make the real decisions that, you know, I don't want to go against them necessarily. But if I have my opinion, I want to be sure that I'm saying that and making myself known in the room. And, you know, sometimes it's just grinding against other people and kind of pushing back, which can seem like a risk, but ultimately it's going to make you a valued member of the team. And, you know, when you're not in the room, you want someone to be representing you. What I mean by that is, you know, when I'm not there and something comes up, I want to be the person that somebody says, oh, let's get Patrick's opinion on it. And that's something that was kind of ingrained in me through my MBA program that kind of pushed on that leadership. Networking internally and externally is another big part that I think is important, especially when looking for the next position, when looking for your next role, and just getting overall career advice. There's a lot of people who have a lot of great stories that you just should be a big listener. That's such an important part of networking is a lot of people will just want to rush up, shake the hand, and be like, hey, can you get me a job? that's never going to come off well, but learning to be like, hey, can we grab coffee sometime? Like, I'd just like to pick your brain about um, your career, career decisions. And that still has, you know, it's created a few mentors in the year that I've been with this company. And it's been an awesome experience. And again, just having that confidence and getting the decision making skills is something that is going to make you a valued member of any team that you're on you want to be self-confident and you want to build that up and 
through the business education, there's so many opportunities in every single class to put yourself on the spot, make those decisions, kind of go against your classmates, go against your professors and discuss what you think should be done. Because trusting your own decision-making skills is one of the most valued things you can have once you go into your career. But overall, the, the kind of takeaways and what I've looked for in terms of affirmations and compliments and what I want people to see is those four things. So having leadership is very important. And it doesn't mean that just because I'm kind of the lowest rung on, in an entry level position, that doesn't mean that I'm just because I'm not in charge of anyone, leadership is something I can ignore. Leadership kind of goes into that, rolls into the other three. When you're on a team and you have a specific, just a part of a larger project, you wanna be sure that that thing is running as smoothly as you can. And when you have that, and when you're taking that initiative and you're showing the confidence in yourself, you're gonna gain that trust from your other workers. And again, it's something that was built through the MBA program and continually taking opportunities whenever we could to push ourselves, to kind of think outside of the box. And overall, it was just a fantastic experience being in the MBA that still to this day, I'm reflecting on and seeing how it can help me every single day. Okay, so Benji and Patrick, thanks so much for sharing your experiences. I might have some questions, but first I want to um, open it up to Lavinia to see if there are questions that Absolutely. participants have. Um, I don't see any at the moment, but I do want to uh, renew the invitation. And of course, if anyone has questions regarding Benji's and Patrick's experiences, they are more than welcome. If you have any curiosity related to the programs at Syracuse, feel free to ask away. Shri will take your questions, um, even if they are a bit more on the technical side, so, so, so to speak. Um, of course, on our behalf, we are very uh, glad to have both Patrick and Benji here, and I think their experiences have been a valuable uh, insight uh, for this event. Shri, I will leave the floor to you once again. And in the meantime, of course, if the participants want to ask any question, they can do so either via chat or uh, in the Q&A box. So feel free to reach out if you, if you wish to do so. Thank you. Okay. Great. So let's see. It's it's back like you're back in school again, aren't you guys? <laughs> Here I am. I'm going to ask you questions again, but no assignments this time. Um, so so for me, it's it's been an, a very enlightening process to see where you are now, considering that when you first started and you know came to meet with me. Uh, as uh, potential candidates into the three plus two MBA program, right? To see the evolution and and to and I, can I just start by saying how proud I am of both of you and your accomplishments. Um, so so let's start with you, Benji. I know you didn't talk too much about your music side, but I know you are a musician. You were composing. You had that little truck and you were traipsing all around the country. So, so tell us a little bit about that experience and what you learned in that experience that ultimately translates into your current passion and your current work as well. Yeah. So I, I've done quite a few and I didn't go super in depth, but Musically, everything from performing to recording to engineering to writing to you, know, you name it, marketing side of the music versus the uh, uh, going to New York and playing a show on the weekend. Uh, that was all what I was really about. And that's what I, I got into Syracuse really excited to do. And, what, and then I, I found out that as much as I really liked the performance aspect, I really wanted to be managing the performance um and so one of the things as you mentioned uh me and actually a previous college roommate for when i was taking uh, my, my mba coursework we bought a school bus in the fall of 2020 and we started re renovating it into a mobile studio 
and we were, uh, we're, we're still uh, in the process of putting it together, but we've done some work where we've toured around a little bit to meet with creatives up and down the East Coast of, of uh, the United States. And the point of that was just to highlight and be able to have an opportunity to meet with creatives, whether music or art, uh, and, and kind of have a give them a platform. Uh, but alongside of that, you realize that when you do that, you need to have a budget, you need to have a marketing plan, you need to have all these things that are just part of any business, any venture, anything entrepreneurial uh, pursuit that I found immediately I was using from that because I, I was doing my MBA uh, at the same time. So I was able to pull straight from uh, Professor Batosa's class looking at how do I put a, uh, a business plan together and get some try to create some value for someone to help sponsor and to, to get some support. And how, how do I market this to my audience? How do I market this to people that, that want to be a part of it? And that was a really cool thing. Uh, and, and from there, that is uh, definitely something I'm still super excited to work on. Uh, but while we're, we're getting our next phase of that together, having the opportunity to, to come out and practice my leadership development skills, which Patrick did a, a, a decent talk uh, about that, the leadership and, and the networking and the confidence, putting that to work in a music setting, in a managerial setting to, to be able to talk to people, to create relationships internally and externally. So I, I've had a few opportunities to travel around here to do some uh, networking talks. Uh, at one point uh, earlier this spring, I was back in Syracuse, New York, doing a networking talk. So it's really great to kind of see all these different pieces that, the, you know, the, how business spans across multiple industries, whether it's music, whether it's education, whether it's art, uh, whether it's just a, a, a generic business business. Uh, that, that's where I found myself in been able to kind of pull the, the, the fruit from all these different orchards. Remind me again, when did you two graduate? Wasn't it just like last year? Yeah, last year. Such a difference, such a difference. But um, it's, it's interesting to see that, you know, yes, you came in to do some networking talk with, with your, uh, uh, with the current students at the School of Music. And it's, um, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, juxtaposition, isn't it? When you talk networking, here's Patrick doing it in a truly corporate setting. And here you are doing it with creatives and bringing the music aspect of it and the music industry. But in both, there are similarities. So you're both meeting people that you don't know from before. How are you introducing yourself and how you're taking, you know, presenting yourself. So of course the elevator pitches from class um must have helped and oh, yeah. do, you, do you guys want to touch upon that anything any fond memories of elevator pitches of elevator pitches i think one of the things that has kind of evolved in my elevator pitch is not just what i've done but what i want to do mm -hmm. and that's something that you know if i don't say it to a lot of these people that i want to form into a mentor or you know just higher ups that i'm getting 30 minutes to chat with they're going to ask me, you know, where do you want to go? And for that, once they see that I kind of have a North Star to look for, and, you know, I'm able to say that immediately, it gives them the confidence that, oh, yeah, he's going to get there. He wants to get there. Let me see what tips and advice or what I can do for him to kind of help him along that path. Mm -hmm. Edgy, you want to add anything? Yeah, and similar to your analogy with, with the North Star and having a destination, when I talk to people about creating these relationships, uh, one thing that's stuck out to me is being able to flip the golden circle inside out. So instead of talking about what you do and how you do it, let's talk about why you do it and how you, you got there. And to me, being able to say, this is my purpose. This is what I really enjoy. This is, this is what drives me. And as alluding to, to Patrick's analogy, what do I, where do I want to go? That's where the, the networking aspect, that's where the relationship comes from. And the more tools you have in your pocket, so whether it's a music degree or it's an engineering degree, whether it's a business degree, those are the things that I want to do this. And because I also have the how, the business degree, and I have these different experiences, that's what I'm going to do. And that's the real take takeaway as far as building your network, setting yourself up for success, having those tools in your, in, in your toolbox ready to go.
and and that also expands into managing relationships doesn't it like so we're taking it it's not just that you meet somebody and give an elevator pitch and then you never contact them until like a year two years later because you never know you don't want to ever burn bridges you want to maintain those relationships and even if nothing comes out of that initial contact you still want to keep the relationship going or stay in touch because you never know where it's going to lead in future. Any particular examples that you might have in that regard? Yeah. The, uh, and so we, we always talk about not burning bridges. And I think the music industry, the music business is particularly small. So <laughs> any, any burned bridge is, is you're cutting off half of the industry. Uh, and one of the Going back to my, my days as a student at Syracuse, I had an opportunity to connect with uh, a sync director out of New York City for a, a large uh, Sony subsidiary that was putting all the music into films and TV and, and stuff that you know we don't think about, but it's really cool and has an, a, a huge impact on a lot of our, our uh, daily media. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, it was, it was for an internship and, and with uh, the pandemic and COVID, I never got a chance to work with them in person. But it's something that every once in a while still here, uh, he'll shoot me a text and I'll shoot him a text and we're still talking that back and forth. And I didn't even work with him. So that's that's the being able to maintain relationships to be able to talk about that. Why? And because we both just love music and we have a lot of similarities that we're able to connect and bond, even though we don't have that day to day. It's it's the long game of, of keeping that relationship uh, going. Mm-hmm. Patrick, do you have anything similar? Yeah, so one of the managers that I had that's in Syracuse and worked with him on a ton of different projects and, you know, I'd take the time to talk with him about what we're kind of what we would be working on, but I also just kind of would take the time out of like, hey, you're in the office, let's grab lunch and just kind of talk and, you know, sometimes it'd just be about nonsense stuff. But (laughs) building that relationship and getting, you know, some face to face time, but also when we were virtual you know, being able to have that. And he actually had an opportunity that was just like that, that the person who hired him first into sales about 15 years ago, gave him a call back in February and was like, Hey, I'm now, you know, part of this company and we don't really have a strategy side to it. And I kind of need someone that has the strategic marketing thing experience that I know you have and ended up kind of popping him off of our team and bringing him into, you know, a major leadership role that, you know, he hasn't talked with her in probably a few years, but because, you know, they maintained it for a while, she still knew the value that he would bring to her team. And now he's kind of doing the same thing to me of just like, when is your contract up? Mm, um, Yeah, because you're remote. I know you're in Chicago, but we got a Chicago office. We can can bring you along. So you know, that's something that, you know, thought he would just be in that position and maybe one position up, but now he's at a completely new company with completely different, it's kind of a, it's not medical devices. It's more on the biotechnology side, which, you know, it's something that interests me and not where I thought I would be, but, you know, because of that relationship, even though I don't have the biotech experience, he knows that I have the capabilities to kind of get in there and make my case for, you know, being a valuable member of his team. You never know. You never know. So we have two questions here in the Q&A. But I'm going to start, yeah, I'm going to start with the one for Benji and Patrick. So the question is, considering your careers now, how different do you think they would be if you had not taken a Syracuse degree? Who wants to go first? (laughs) Yeah, I can take it. Or you got it? You got it. You got it. Go. All right. Um, I think one of the really cool things about Syracuse and, you know, me and Benji had the pleasure of being there for five years, and we really saw a lot of the entrepreneurship stuff on campus take off. You know, there's a Blackstone Launchpad, which, you know, as undergrad or grad, you can join. And Blackstone Launchpad is if you have an idea and want to create a business, They will give you all of the resources that they can to do that. And even if you don't have an idea to create your own business, you can join as a team. And Blackstone is just one example of a lot of the ways that I think, especially 
you know, from a traditional education perspective, you just think like, oh, I'm get, just going to get a lecture. But Syracuse and basically every job that I had would push for getting that hands-on training, getting kind of thinking outside of the box and pushing yourself. And that's something that I felt in a lot of my classes, both on the engineering and the MBA side. But now, you know, as I entered, there's a lot of Syracuse alumni that are in Welch Allen and, you know, Hillram and Baxter that they still have that kind of mindset. And you see that in Syracuse alum. And, you know, I think they saw that I was Syracuse when I applied into this program. And I think that was a major part of me getting hired onto this position is because they saw, oh, we want more Syracuse people on our team. And, you know, that was before they even saw anything in my interviews. So I think the Syracuse impact and value is definitely something that would be hard to beat and get to the same point in my career if I chose somewhere else. Angie? Yeah. So there aren't as many Syracuse people out in uh, music retail uh, as there are with, with, with Patrick's company. But even so, having that, that recognizable name of Syracuse University and having connections in the area and having people to talk to and bounce ideas off of, uh, that for one was a huge, huge portion of, of me getting out here. Uh, Syracuse alumni provided me an interim position uh, that eventually afforded me the ability to apply, uh, interview, and accept the current position that I'm at now. But if I hadn't gotten my MBA from Syracuse, what would my career look like? That's a, an interesting question that I thought about a lot, where I think getting my MBA from Syracuse definitely put me at kind of a next step, a next level to uh, open my horizons just a bit more. Where I'm at now is uh, I'm overseeing and managing all the training for about 300 uh, employees here on site, which is I don't think something they would just hand out to any, any person uh, having the MBA degree afforded me the opportunity afforded me the office time, the face-to-face -face time to talk with people and show them that, Hey, I have this, all these tools and I have these tools and I, I'm able to, to build this job and, and what value do I bring? And if I hadn't had that, that degree, if I hadn't had that experience at Syracuse, I don't think I would have been taken seriously. I don't think I would have gotten the interview uh, and I don't think I'd be where I'm at today. Great. Um, there is another question. If the program is offering scholarship to foreign students. Yes, uh, we consider all admitted students for merit scholarship, both for the full-time MBA as well as the specialized master's programs. So if you can go on our website and you will see more information and then you can shoot me an email if you want to schedule a meeting or you want to receive more information. But for the purposes of this webinar, I wanted to keep it very general and have uh, Patrick and Benji share more of their experiences and not bring us towards particular B-School program focus. Um, Yes, yeah, so we absolutely have one more question. I think that's very interesting. That would be very interesting for Benji and Patrick. A participant is asking if they can identify a before and an after in their life after living this program experience. I can identify one for you too, to jump off of if you would like. So, um, I think as a starting point, it would be um, before you came into the program, you had a set number of credits to complete. And then when you when you added the MBA, your life basically became running from one school to the other because you were doing what, 17 to 20 credits per semester? We, yeah. we prepared you really yeah. well in managing time, I should say. But yes. do you wanna talk about that like before and after? Like how yeah. life changed, social life, student groups, student experience in general? Yeah, so I think if I were to put like, you know, the moment, there's a few moments I could probably say that there was the before Patrick and the after Patrick. And for <laughs> me, it was in the summer of 2019, I had the opportunity to go to Rwanda with Engineering World Health. And I got some product training as a clinical engineer, but I also 
um, was working in a hospital for you know a month and a half, and you know the low resources and the amount of needs that that hospital had kind of opened my perspective on just what medical devices mean to all you know from a global perspective. And specifically, I was also there doing a project with um, Syracuse that kind of combined both the business side and the engineering side and developed a, you know, kind of did a need assessment on what specific products can be improved that I can then come back and create a little bit of a team in, you know, through one of the undergrad experiences that pulled both business students and engineering students in undergrad. So developing that team, but it was being there and seeing the need and having the opportunity to develop that need and seeing kind of how it went. And ultimately the product ended up being a failure, but that's not the part I really think of because I learned so much on just how much I could do and also, you know, managing a team and getting that whole experience really changed me and gave me a lot of confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. Before and after. Uh, so before, short hair, no mustache. After, <laughs> long hair, mustache. Uh, but uh, on a serious note, honestly, before I had no idea what opportunities were available. And after I found a job that kind of put together everything that I loved. And if I hadn't taken the MBA, if I hadn't had that fifth year, if I hadn't broadened my horizons, I would probably be performing, which I would love to do, uh, but I wouldn't have been in a, uh, I'm the only person at, at, at this company that does what I do. Uh, to find a very niche job like this is very difficult, very, you know, almost chance-based. So if I hadn't t taken those steps and, and forwarded my ed education, I don't think I'd be here. I don't think I would be uh, being able to combine everything that I love to do. I just want to add one other um, aspect for the perspective and, and want both of you to comment on it. Because when you came into the program, uh, you, were, you were still completing your undergrad and then you were also doing the MBA. So you're not exactly traditional MBA candidates, right? So, but you were also exposed to uh, a whole lot of cultural diversity. Uh, with international students from different places, um, and then also diversity in terms of uh, work experience and educational experiences. Um, what type of an impact did that have for you guys in building your own perspective? And how do you sort of bring that sort of diversity and inclusion into your own work in your day-to-day -day lives? Angie? I can do you want to start? First. Okay, sure. Um, so there's a really old quote from Theogenes that it's basically, we have two ears and one mouth, which means we should listen more than we speak. And for me, especially when you're in kind of an environment, you know, in business school, and even now I'm on the Latin American marketing team, and I'm the only person on my team that's, that, that was born in the U.S. And, you know, I'm speaking to people that are out in the regions. And a lot of the time, you know, I can talk a good amount, but I need to sit there and listen and get that perspective because get, hearing those perspectives, hearing those outside opinions helps to form my own opinion, shifts my own opinion and challenges me to kind of change that. And, you know, being in kind of that diverse environment, you don't want to be speaking over people. You want to be getting as much of their perspective as you can, because that's what ultimately makes you a better leader in the long term. That's that's a great a great uh, phrase, great quote. The two two ears, one mouth, being able to listen. Uh, and so for, for me, it's kind of ironic because the music industry is, tends to be very inclusive, tends to be a lot more diverse. Uh, and then where I'm at now in the United States tends to be very uh, kind of ho uh, homogenous in its, its diversity. So that's part of, I, I'm on the, the board here to, to kind of try to create a, a safe space uh, and, and to, to build more opportunities for diversity, to build more opportunities for inclusivity. Uh, and I'm also on a, a committee for the Audio Engineering Society of America uh, as a, a committee member for their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts uh, to put that in practice, not just in audio, but also in audio performances and creative types across uh, the United States and the world. 
I Thank knew you. something was up, even though you guys didn't mention any of that before. <laughs> So anyway, Lavinia, thank you so much. I think we're we're at the top of the hour. Yes, but we do have one more question for Patrick. Um, I wanted to read this aloud because I think it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, so Johannes from South Africa uh, is asking if Patrick, uh, you would recommend to universities to consider establishing platforms like Blackstone for entrepreneurial purpose so that students can sharpen their business skills. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, Blackstone is kind of, they have a few different launch pads at universities. And to me, I think even if you're not interested in ever creating your own product, creating your own service, creating your own business, I think getting entrepreneurship experience is one of the most valuable things you can do because it gives a lot more power to your hand. And even though I'm in kind of a corporate environment, there's still what, you know, we call entrepreneurship opportunities to develop certain programs that we have. And especially in this integration process, there's a lot that we don't really know what's going on, but creating new, I've had the opportunity to create new kind of processes and look at the synergies that I think if I didn't have the opportunity to see the more entrepreneurial side where you have a little bit more free reign, I would have felt kind of limited, but because I had that experience, I think I had a bit more open mind than others did. Thank you so much, Patrick. So we do have a couple more questions, but seeing as they are more on the technical side, I would recommend participants to reach out to the admissions office. Uh, all the participants will get uh, an email with the recording of the event. So, of course, if you miss any important information, if you would like to just review the content again and maybe get inspired about um, pursuing a, a master or an MBA at Syracuse, uh, you will be able to do so. Um, you, you will also have uh, the email address to reach out to the university. So uh, once again, I wanted to thank all the participants for being here, here with us today and just for uh, keeping us company until now. I want to uh, thank Patrick and Benji for their presence and for taking the time um, out of their day to uh, just answer questions and to offer their perspective into this program. And Shri, of course, uh, as always, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to um, moderate events with you. And without further ado, I wish everyone a nice evening or day according to where they are connecting from and hope to see everyone to the next event with Syracuse. Thank you very much for having me again and a uh, round of applause. And I'm very proud of you guys. Thanks for coming in and doing this with me today. Uh, Benji, Patrick, really appreciate it. And uh, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Once Thanks, again, Lydia. thank you so much and see you at the next event with Syracuse University. Thank you all thank you. and bye -bye. I wish everyone a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye, -bye. bye.